your live, sir. Awesome. All right, guys. So we are going to hop into our session T14 on custom configurations. So our objectives today are to describe diff uh, different custom configurations to meet common client needs. We're going to describe the features and char characteristics for different custom configured workstations. Lots of C's in that one, man. Uh, given a scenario, we're going to select the appropriate components for a custom PC configuration to meet customer specification needs or needs. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Uh, you're going to need to make use of our communication skills. We're going to be uh, in the real world, you'll be interacting with clients and also your employees. And it's important to understand what they want, their budgets, doing for the work. So that way you can create the build that works best for them without going giving too much or too little. It's finding that balance. And it's important to have growth mindset for this uh, because it's easy to say that all computers should just have everything loaded up, max RAM, best GPU, best CPU you can have, but you have to be willing to um, let go of that idea and just build what you need. All right, so specialized custom PCs. Specialized computing needs require specialized PCs to get the job done. IT professionals should know how to build a PC according to customer needs. And the three most common that you'll see are workstation PCs, media workstations, and specialized consumer PCs. All right, so our first one, thick client. So a thick client is a PC that has all the capabilities of a standard PC. It runs modern operating systems. Uh, it's general, uh, and it runs general productivity applications to accomplish a majority of their tasks needed by office and home users. This is the PC that you will buy off the shelf at Best Buy or Walmart or wherever you would go to pick one up. It's ready to be used as soon as you, you get it off the shelf. So the key to a good thick client is sufficient core hardware uh, that will support the operating system. And you want typical desktop applications such as office productivity and network applications. So it's nothing special, but it's it's pretty your your average computer. Right. And then we have our thin clients. So a thin client is a system designed to outsource as much of its work as possible. Uh, these PCs have just enough hardware and power to run the selected operating system and a few basic applications. So thin clients usually rely on resources from uh, powerful servers. Uh, so they might not make use of hard drives or store any data on the system. It might be stored like in the cloud or uh, on a server elsewhere that's not on the system directly. And they serve as a single purpose system, like point of sale machines. So you could, you might see these in uh, like Walgreens or Walmart. They're just used as the, it just has the basic uh, application that they're using, nothing else on it. Hey, Avery, would it be yeah. safe to call that like a, a kiosk? computer uh potentially yeah yeah i, I could likely yeah, yeah. Uh, you know everything's situational so but
but <clears throat> it, it would be very likely that you would see something like this at a kiosk. Good question, Mark. All right. And so the only requirement for thin clients are network connectivity, access to servers, uh, and access to servers over the network. So there's really not much to them. So whenever you see thin client, just think very little, not much to it. And thick client is your basic off the shelf device. Right, virtualization workstations. So virtualization enables us to run more than one operating system at the same time on a single computer. Uh, virtual PCs or virtualization PC is called the host while the virtual machines are called guests. All hardware resources from the PC are shared between multiple virtual PCs and the host PC. So the single device tower you have is splitting its resources among every single uh, virtual machine that's being run. It saves on hardware costs uh, when needing to have access to different operating systems for many different reasons, uh, some including testing software on different platforms and working in a support environment. So like if you build apps, you or um, or you create software and you wanted to test it on an Apple uh, computer, but you only have a, a Windows PC, you could run a virtual machine and test it on there. You can also uh, simulate like an Android device or an Apple phone to test apps. Also, Avery, if you if you realize well, everybody is not running Windows 10. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that your application that you are uh, developing can still be supported on Windows 7, maybe even Windows 8 or Vista. I, I doubt it you'll go that far back, but if you had the ability to do, to do it, you'll want to be able to know that it can be stable on those platforms. Yeah, good point, Marvin. Thank you. All right. And since you're splitting your resources among these different virtual machines, you typically want to have a lot of RAM uh, because each virtual machine is going to be using its required amount of RAM. And you also need a, a solid CPU that actually can you make use of virtualization because not all CPUs can. All right, so virtualization requirements. For good performance on a virtual virtualization environment, a lot of RAM is required <clears throat> and a fast CPU with multiple cores is recommended. So the big thing for virtual machines, lots of RAM, really fast CPU. RAM is the most important requirement since each virtualization workstation needs enough memory to run the native operating system, the guest operating system, and any other applications running on either of those operating systems. So it's using a lot of RAM. And if there isn't enough memory, the virtual machine will not start. So if you are in a work environment and you have people that make use of virtualization and their virtual machines are running, it's very possible that there just isn't enough RAM. So a powerful 64-bit CPU with many cores also helps virtual machines uh, run more smoothly. Uh, 
Evan, what two things do we need on a virtualization machine? What was that, Evan? You would need enough RAM and then because if you don't have enough RAM, you wouldn't it wouldn't be able to operate. Yep. And CPU. Like a fast yep. enough a fast enough CPU, not just any CPU. Yep. And it needs to have multiple cores so that way it can run the virtualization. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good job, Evan. And thank you all that helped in chat. Well done. All right. So a graphics workstation, our next system. So graphic designers mainly fall into computer-aided design, or CAD, and computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM, categories. All of them require workstations that enable running consuming resource applications like Adobe Photoshop or AutoCAD. So the requirements for these types of PCs, you want a solid state hard drive. And who can tell me why we would want a solid state hard drive instead of a regular hard drive? Who got their hand up? Luis. Uh, solid state hard drives are very fast. Right. And you need a very fast you know, memory for that. Yeah. So we'd want a solid state drive because we, uh, we're going into the hard drive pretty frequently with the CAD machines. And so being able to go in and find all these different files quickly is super beneficial. So having an SSD are, is, is very good. Uh, we also want maximum RAM. So as much RAM as you can possibly put in it. We're doing a lot of processing. Uh, and you need to check the parameters of each graphics software. But the more RAM, the better. We're also going to need high-end video cards with its own memory, processor, and display adapters. So you want a very strong GPU. And that will also take some of the load off. Oh, wait, wait. Marvin, how would you phrase this in a question? Do you know what I'm about to say? Uh, it feels like a moment where I, sh I should be asking the question, but and not just saying it. Um, well, one thing that uh, a graphics PC. Hold on, this is not gaming. It's not gaming, but it's yeah. still like I was. I was leading it. Maybe we'll come back to it when we get the gaming. Okay, I got you. All right. Try to catch me before I, I say too much. Okay. Let them do some critical thinking. Will do. All right. And so we're also going to want to have high quality monitors um, for the visualization process or purposes. Uh, it's typically a good idea to have more than one monitor as well. You have more space to work on. Uh, Janina, what three things do we want within our graphics workstation? Um, uh, monitor, uh, fast CPU, and a lot of RAM. We got two out of three. So we got our monitors and we got lots of RAM. But how are we going to display to those monitors? Uh, uh, graphic card? Yeah, card? we need, yep, we need a fast graphics card. Oh, and SSD. 
There were four things that we needed. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And Jordan, why do we need that fast SSD? So the graphic card can move fast. For the graphics card? Oh, see, y'all don't want to help me, huh? <laughs> There you go. Mark set up so we can transfer data more quickly. All right, moving on to our audio editing workstation. So audio, audio editing workstations require mints are very similar to the graphic workstations, um, plus a high quality audio inter interface and powerful speakers. So an audio interface provides multiple input output audio connectors for microphones, speakers, and other instruments. So it makes sense if you think about what an audio editing workstation is. They're editing audio, whether that be music, uh, recordings, of uh, just people talking or singing and mixing it all together. So that being said, well, okay. uh, it'll look similar to what you'll be using for like a video editing workstation which in this case, you're editing videos instead of just audio. Uh, video editing workstations combine the requirements of the audio and graphic workstation, where uh, video editing requires a very powerful CPU paired with as much RAM as possible, uh, since it's a far more intensive process than graphics and audio editing. Uh, also, some video editing workstations have multiple hard drives set up in RAID for added storage capacity and enhanced read-write speed. They're dealing with lots of data because they're editing videos, like lots of different footage, uh, or they're creating their own footage, um, and lots of audio files. So that takes up a lot of space. So you're going to want a lot of the space on your hard drives. And having RAID can be, depending on how they use it, uh, it can benefit in different ways. And you think video editing, editing, you think in graphics card right off. But if you think about it, the video isn't that it's moving like it's not like a game that's constantly changing the backgrounds and everything's moving it's the amount of editing of video that you've already had so that's your processor working it's not your graphics card working so you got to lean into that that's ram that's your random access memory being able to pull that information up so uh hey if you don't mind we'll just jump in just a quick sec yeah, i used to give it. people uh at circuit city a quick little breakdown of how I explain a computer to somebody that's just fresh off the boat or whatever you want to be off. So um, I, I I give them the thought that your your computer processor is kind of the motor in a car. It goes as fast as that processor, that motor can go. But you need storage. So storage is going to be the trunk of the car. But you can have a big trunk and a whole lot of stuff in there, but no way to access it or get to it quick. So I used to say RAM, the, the amount of RAM you have is the amount of hands that's going in your trunk, pulling things out. So the more RAM you have, the more hands, the quicker you can bring things to the string or out of the trunk. So 
if you think about it, you have all that video that, that Ava just talked about. So much video that you're combing through trying to paste together this, uh, this movie or whatever you're doing. If you if you record it, wedding uh, video, and you're trying to get the pe perfect pieces. You got to get out. You got to fit. You got to like comb through all of that. So you need the hands to process it. You're not. It's not really graphics heavy. It's still just a wedding. It's still just a video, but it requires a lot of uh, performance with the RAM and the the processor to bring it out as quickly as possible. Thank you, Myron. That was a good analogy. Um, same with the the uh, the graphics workstation. Having a second monitor is super helpful because you can spread your work out. Um, so you can have your editing, what you're editing on one screen, and then on the other, you can have like different files that you need to go to, um, or like go through without it taking up your only workspace. So having that second monitor is super helpful. Right. A home server PC. As more computing devices move into the home environment, there's more need for a centralized PC to provide multiple services to all members of the house. So home server PC mainly supplies three functions. Media streaming, file sharing, and print sharing. So media streaming sounds like what it is. Streams videos to other computers in the house. This, uh, the benefits are centralized storage of the contents and reduced duplication of the content on other PCs. So you could have a bunch of movies or, or even songs on a central location and have it accessible from other locations in the house without having to keep it directly on those other computers. But nowadays you can just kind of stream Netflix and Spotify. So it's not used as much, but there are definitely people that use it. My stepdad has thousands and thousands and thousands of CDs that he's collected from his time working at the radio station. And he has put most of them onto his computer. And he, he could definitely stream media from anywhere in the house, all from that location. Uh, so we also have file sharing. And uh, this can be useful to keep all shared folders in a uh, the same location. It saves space and facilitates the creation of backups. So having backups is always great. Uh, print sharing. We uh, it's nice to have a centralized control of printing. Uh, printer permissions can be used to control who does what to the printers, as well as whose print jobs get priority in a crunch time. So requirements for these home server PCs. So the requirements on software are not complicated since any modern operating system enables to share files and print services. Uh, hardware needs apply primarily to the network speed and hard drive capacity and redundancy. Uh, if the home server is very active, then Having CPU and RAM are going to be important. So you want good CPU, good RAM. Since all services are provided through the network, a gigabit Ethernet NIC or network card uh, should be used to avoid bottlenecks. And if data redundancy is critical, two or more identical hard drives should be installed in a RAID configuration. Home theater PCs or HTPC. I recommend writing both those down because that will be 
seen in multiple tests where it won't say home theater PC, it'll say HTPC. Um, when I came across that, I know what a home theater PC is, but I didn't know what HTPC was. And so I got the question wrong. So just recommend writing both those down. So a home theater system enables you to play music and watch movies and television. An optimal home theater has five components. So it's going to have a monitor, TV, or projector as its screen. Most, well, I personally like projectors because you can have larger spaces if you're going to do this home theater route. Uh, it's good to have surround sound speakers, so you have better audio. A stereo receiver, the home theater PC itself, so your little tower, and you want network connectivity. That way you can stream Netflix, Spotify, whatever. Uh, the requirements for the home theater PC are a video card, with support for large monitors at high resolutions. So you want to have at least an HDMI connector. You want to have a fast NIC. You want a sound card that supports 5.1 or 7.1 stereo and DVD drive. So if you think about what a home theater would look like, that's kind of what you want to have in and around your system. This picture right here is actually from Marvin's home, in case you guys were wondering. Negative. That's his setup. It's complete negative. Avery, be honest, it's the beach house. Oh, wow, yeah, sorry. Man. It's his third home. Bad. Sorry. That's third home. Not hey. You think so? I'm still doing sweepstakes trying to win a HGT uh, dream home. If y'all think I'm got it like this, hey, you could always <laughs> use a fourth home. Yeah, I'm lo I'm about to log out. <laughs> y'all y'all painting the wrong y'all painting the wrong picture of me. I just, we have a Honda Civic, and I'm I'm thinking about repurposing it for the thing that me and Kelly got going on. So. We will get to that. We will, we will share the business model with the class and uh, so see, if can, see if we can adapt it at all. I think you'll pick up some investors. In the market for a second Civic. <laughs> exactly. High miles. Don't want to put extra mileage on the, the Lexus. The other Civic. All right. <clears throat> Gaming PCs. <laughs> so, uh, while casual gamers can get by with a thick client, those who take their gaming seriously want a powerful PC ready for every game. Requirements for essential features for PC gaming or gaming PC are going to be a fast multi-core processor, a lot of RAM, a high-end video card, high-definition sound, and cooling capacity so this machine's going to get whoa 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 kelly full of student gotta catch myself chris chris why do we need high cooling capacity There, Chris. Three, two, all right. Alan. I'm all over. Um, <clears throat> one reason why you would want a cooling a higher cooling capacity is because uh overclocking, <clears throat> especially with a gaming PC, you want to cool that CPU off as quickly as possible. 
Potentially. Quickly as possible? Are we sure about that? You, you want to cool it off, though, right? Yeah, but I'm saying as quickly as possible? Remember the conversation we had about... Remember the conversation we had about taking a like a hot glass out of the dishwasher and then you put ice water in it? What happened? Oh, yeah, it might, it might mess up so gradually. You wanted the yeah. most effective cooling method, yes. And typically, we're not going to be overclocking our systems because it's very bad for your, your CPU. So I don't recommend doing that. Right. Um, it's all right if you are, well, uh, being recorded. It's never all right to do this and I cannot recommend you do that but if you are on a budget and you need a little faster CPU work then overclocking can be made use of to to keep you from having to buy a, a faster CPU for a short period of time but I, I cannot recommend that uh, Justin, do you want to add to that on why we would need cooling capacity? Um, yeah, uh, typically with gaming computers, they have the graphic cards and they have to have uh, more RAM, more hard drive space. So um, what I was trying to get to was the CPU like it run hot faster, so they have to have a faster cooler mechanism to, to cool it down. A lot of the time, from what I read, they use the liquid cooling method um, because it uh, it cools it down in a more effective manner without, like you guys said, uh, cooling it off too fast to where like it'll crack the CPU or something like that. Right. A lot of processes are happening when playing high-end games, and especially if you're running them on uh, higher settings. So your computer will get very, very hot. And so having effective cooling is the best thing you can do for your, your gaming PC. Uh, mine has one, two, three, four, five, seven fans. Uh, and there's also a fan on the graphics card. And it also makes use of liquid cooling because it will get very hot. And so I don't want that to happen. So using liquid cooling will help cool it down or just keep it cold in general. Yes, sir, Justin. Um, I know you just said you wouldn't recommend overclocking, of course, but would you be able to, to have an effective gaming PC uh, with those components without hyper thread. Because um, like, when I was reading on it, it's kind of, it's not hard to tell the difference, but they both have such similar definition. It's kind of like they're saying the same thing. Tell you not so much, not so much. Um, hyper threading is the ability of the PC to handle multiple um, requests at the same time. Yeah. Uh, to like compute two different, like a single core can compute two different things at one time. And then you have, you know, eight core processors so it can process 16 different uh, computational requests at any given time. Mm -hmm. um, so that is like a multitasking capability versus overclocking it, which just allows you to do individual um, calculations at a faster rate, which is overclocking. Well said, Kellen. Was that good for you, Jace? Yeah, no doubt. So basically, okay. you would want a hyper thread with a game with a gaming PC because you need you would want to a more tasks you, at the same time. Let's let's prioritize what we want. What do you think the first thing you want with a gaming PC? Let me. I want to hear you say it. What's the first thing that you would want with a gaming PC? Um, a multi core process. Uh uh. A cool Man. chair. I want a very, very high-end video card because that video card is going to get stretched. The first, that's going to be the first thing that that game is going to require. It's going to want a really good – people. there are people out here that buy the best games and they're trying to see the best video cards, how well it's working on them. They're not 
rechanging out the process each time a game comes out. But then anytime yeah. a new um, graphics card come out, they're buying that graphics card mainly because they know that that graphics card is doing all the heavy lifting. Now, on the back end, the processor is, is helping for sure. As you can see, having a, uh, it's one of the requirements up here. But the first thing you're looking at is, is that video card. It's very possible, Justin, that the most expensive thing in your computer is your video card. Huh. Like people, Especially right now. Yeah, people will base their bills around the video card. Like, hey, I'm going to get this $1,100 video card, $1,300 video card. Now, what else do I need? <laughs> so I buy the video card first. Now I'm looking at the motherboard. I can get an now, $800, $800 processor, but, you know, there's that there's that $3,000 video card I want. Right. So because it, it's going to do the heavy, heavy lifting with assistance from the process, CPU. Oh man, all the graphics cards are bought up by the crypto miners. So I got to go on a wait list or buy one on eBay for three times the price. Yeah, people are overselling or we, they're reselling. You know how they do shoes. They're doing that with with, with uh, video cards and in some cases CPU processors as well because of the the uh, the chip crisis that we are seeing a little bit. But even on even and also the people that are buying them up for mining of cryptocurrency so there's a lot of different reasons but anytime somebody see gaming first thing you need to think is they got to have a super good video card off back if they're doing it right they're going to have a good processor and they better have a good way to cool it so liquid cooling is a ooh, i said it dang avery you let me say it liquid cooling is, a, is also a good thing so. <laughs> Random we'll question. Able we'll to we'll make be able to make us. Hold on, hold on. Who does this you, sound like? Who you gotta talk to like, Diego Kelly? for that. Kelly, who does this sound like? Which one? Random question. Will we be able to make a shopping bot? <laughs> we had. I told you we it had. Sounds a, like uh, Jose. <laughs> you sound like Jose. We had a a a, a, a member of a, one of our previous cohorts. <laughs> he started late and he was obsessed with telling us about all the things he was buying for his new PC. And at one point in time, he just felt the need to just say, hey, I mean, I know this is probably not the right place to talk about it, but um, is there any way I can get like a pirated version of, of, of Windows operating system? No, I can't. I'm not, we're not talking about that right now. Yeah, that was day not one. The place. That was day one he was asking that question. <laughs> Oh, that, was, like, oh, that was almost as good pirated? as the other. That was day one, and that, that was almost you know, as good as like the shoes, though. <laughs> like when them no, shoes, Justin, you like, cannot. Uh, you can DM me, but you're not going to just hold this whole court <laughs> and ask about how to get do illegal things. Like, what are we doing? I mean, oh, there's man. avenues, sure, but come on, man, you're not just gonna. Hey, go, go. to jail, player. So you're not <laughs> going to tell us how to make the bite though, Mark. I mean, Marvin. I don't, I don't touch the bots, man. But I mean, they <laughs> exist for yeah. sure. So I still, I still do the lottery. I still do the lottery, <laughs> and, I, and I'm still saying, uh, "Dang, you, you missed this one. Dang, you missed that one." I Bro, mean, I haven't won a lottery yet on this, on the, on the kids, man. Like, yeah, I I mean, they hard, it's hard. It's hard. And one time I win, I bought, yeah. I bought the wrong size. So you know, maybe it's not for me. <laughs> Kill me, Marvin. That's All right, well, let, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, we're close to the end. We can probably, yeah, good job. Hey, no. So this is uh, what the inside of a gaming PC might look like. Uh, doesn't look like it has any storage in it, though. Well, they wouldn't keep the storage right there. Because mm. the are you sure? Solids, solids. Well, no, solid state drives. They can put those in. Uh, you may, it may they be have that. Other I think you can actually fit them in there too. You could. Well, actually, there's one right there. Is it the top, Avery? The first? Yeah. yeah it's very right. small. It's inside right a there. little bracket up there in the first bay. Slide your mouse up, 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 right up there. here. Yeah, that, that has to be a smaller solid state hard drive inside some type of bracket. Let's, let's investigate. Yeah, probably an adapter. Oh, no. 
You see this? This is also this is also a good visual representation of what I was talking about, where you're going for an aesthetic appearance rather than your typical yeah. motherboards and stuff like that, where they're trying to go for you know specific color uh, palettes or whatever. So your cables, you can see your cables in the back. They're all nice and very beautifully cable managed, but they're all the same color. So it'd be very difficult to determine what voltage you're getting out of each one of those wires. We're just going to say that that's a hard drive there, Avery. And then also, okay. yeah, we're just okay. going to say this one. Yeah, we'll just, we'll, sure. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, I got a little little question. We, we've already talked about power supplies, but who can tell me a, something fancy about this power supply? What's special about it? Ooh, Fidel. Beautiful. It's modular. Fidel, you can't come out here and throw out words like modular. What does that mean? Fidel, well, you that means... There you go. Go for it. Yeah, so tell them. Power supplies, they normally come in like three different types. They have a modular, which means that all the cables that come with the power supply, you can individually put them in. They also have semi-modular where it's kind of the same thing, but they have cables already bundled into the power supply. So you don't have to like add them in individually. You can just connect them in. And there's also the non-modular where all the cables are bundled into the power supply. So you gotta somehow manage to fit all of them inside the case. Yep. Thank you, Fidel. Uh, nice. Perfect explanation. Um, if you can help it, you should almost always get a modular power supply because then you only use the cables that you need and you don't have those extra ones that you have to manage yourself. Highly recommend modular power supplies. Nice. One question up to go back one more time. Anybody know uh, Avery? Go, go left, 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 stop. Anybody know what those two wires are right there? Not for matter of fact, matter of fact, don't answer. Kelly, use your cup. Use my what? Use your, you know use your cup. Yeah, yeah, randomizer. Pop Here we go. There you go. Look, at, right. look at look at how, how there we go. Mrs. John. It's two what of them. Looking at here. There's two of them, and they're going down towards something, and they're going up into something. What would you think that is? Matter of fact, yeah, I want to. I don't want to give you too much. TJ, put your hand down. You're not. You can't ask. Me. <laughs> uh, it's like um, something about this, uh, like a mm, liquid something, like a cooling liquid something to cool the system to cool the it's a pipes which one bringing uh, i don't know like a cooling system maybe to uh, uh yeah you're yeah. in you're in the ballpark so um it's like cooling um, it it is so you did answer it so i want somebody else i need one more stick um uh, kelly i'll put your hand down Told you, man. You don't even get that. You don't even get to answer questions anymore. I need. One, I need one more. Frenzy. You turn this camera off. That's so funny. I like that. <laughs> oh man. Hey, a per, a well a well placed zinger does the heart well. I I love it. You got who? What do you say, Kelly? Frenzy. Okay. It so, kind of like a. It looks like that's a fan sitting on top of that thing and so it could be the power supply to the fan and um but if you say it's a liquid cooling system then so if it's liquid cooling like in your car your car has these these pipes that run from the engine towards the front of your car and it goes into this thing with that has the water in it and it gets hot and you it cools it what is that called are you a big car person? Radiator. A radiator. 
and it's a fan up there too. That so that's all that's about. It's an enclosed system where the radiator and the fan does its magic to cool it down, and it's running cool liquid across that processor to keep it cool. That's what's going on. That's why it's you see two. You, it's basically going in a circle. Yeah. Hot, typically, hot, go for the, it. Uh, typically, the fans will attach like on top of the 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 radiator and and um so you can put more than one fan on yeah. to cool it faster like mine has three going across it to keep that water well not water but the liquid uh as cold as it it can be and then the water goes down the tube uh cools the cpu and the hot water goes up the other one into the radiator where it's cooled by the fans and it just keeps going in that that flow. Just wanted to point that out. Yep. And I got one more question. Who can tell me what's fancy about this graphics card? TK. TK, all TK or TJ? E I think K. Get off. Get back on mute. I hope you said TA don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, TJ, you off mute. Go for it. Uh, I don't know. If it's, like... <laughs> it's mad dark in there. Yeah. It looks like you're pointing at the, the cables. Yeah. So let's... let's important about this this cable right here it's flat that's not what's making it special what is what? How do you plug? How do you plug in the uh, graphics card? E Sata for a graphics card. What's the um? What's the popular most popular slot for a graphics card? So there's two places you can put a graphics card. Mark's got one. E-C-D. Mark's got one. No. E-C-I. Yeah, PCIe. Okay, so what does the PCI, you know, what does that interface look like? What I mean, when we say PCIe and AGP, what are those? A bridge. Kind of. Most basic sense, what are they? What do we use them for? Finish it expansion up for slots. There we go. Expansion slots. So it docks into an expansion slot, right? So it goes into that PCIe, PCIe and AGP. Those are expansion slots, which would be over here, right? Or excuse me, sorry, down here. The expansion slots down there, right? This is the exterior port. So what is this? So it's talking to the computer down here. Why do we need this right here? What is this? I want it. No, never mind. It's a bunch of wires going into it right here. Uh, does the does it does it have like an 
extra fun. Kelly, is it, um, I thought I, I was assuming that the wires might be slightly color coded. And I feel like everything in there looks kind of black. Yes, because they're going for an aesthetic look. They're going to something that looks cool, not necessarily just in its general terms. So remember we were saying gaming PCs are not only you know computers, but they also can be art pieces. People like to have them on display, show them off. You know, so they'll do fancy things like put LED lights in them. They'll you know they make sure all their cabling looks similar, but that should not deter us from knowing what these things do. So we know we, we dock it into the expansion slot here onto the motherboard, but we have extra wires coming in and out of it. What are those wires for? What do we use those for? Roberto said something real good in chat. Yeah, man, I want y'all to be passionate about the fact that y'all know what it's for. We said when you buy this thing, you need to make sure that you have so much more allocated performance for that particular thing. What is what is what do those cables represent? Video card. It's the video card, but what what else does that video card need outside of being power. pushed into that? There you go. There it is. Thank That's you. It needs what its want. own power supply. It cannot get all it needs from the PCIe. So it that's going to be the case. Juice. Extra juice to function. Yep. Older graphics cards might not necessarily need that power, that extra power, because they're not capable of running those higher processes. All right. And you can buy gaming PCs uh, at, like, at Best Buy. Um, and this is just like a clip it of like how they vary in price versus four what they have. Four years ago. <laughs> yeah, four or five so, years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like if you get the cheaper one, you have the less intense graphics card and uh, the higher the cost, the higher the graphics, the, the better it per will perform. Um, so you can just like go through and look at the differences between them. But typically, if you're looking to build your own computer, it's not a terrible idea to buy one from a store and then upgrade as you go. But if you buy your parts individually, you have a lot more customization to it and you know what you're buying and how what your upgrade path will look like. So. But you know, if you can't find a graphics card anywhere, then you might just be better off buying a gaming PC from a store. So that way you'll get that graphics card and then you upgrade that whenever you get a chance. And here's some examples of the fancy graphics cards. And then this image is the oh. most important. Avery, I'm sorry. Can you go back to the last slide, please? This one? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So these are just two different examples. They have the same connector. So the PCIe oh, 16. Uh, uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, uh, I, I know you uh, caught me. You, you caught, caught me. Caught I wanted you. to real bad. I saw it. Give me a give me a stick, uh, Kelly. Janina, this Diaz. So I got that GTX 1080, and I got a Radeon card. They look very similar, but I need you to tell me what you see on that GTX that you don't see on that Radeon as an input option. I'm gonna help you out there. Is it a DVI? Man, check it out. That's what nice. I'm talking about. <laughs> DVI is there. So if you know that's DVI, what do you what are you telling me the those connecting points at the bottom are? 
Bonus, bonus, bonus. It's four of them. USD. Ah, TK. And wrong. I'm going to mess with you, Jimmy. Go for it. Since you put your hand up. They look like HDMIs. And wrong. What up, a mess? No, I don't, I don't want That ain't the answer I want, but it is. Don't worry about Jimmy, you're partially right. I want to know what those first two are. Oh. E Sada. And go for it, Alan. <laughs> Um, is one of them a RJ45? Looks like it, but I don't know. What in the what? I don't What's know. What's going on here? <laughs> I can't see. Can't nobody see that. Well, you know, well, you know what the graphics? Card. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me. You're using a graphics card. It's a graphics card. So it's for it's for graphics. You you typically are plugging. We just said DVI. So that's a that's a cable that's gonna get go into your monitor. We need other. What's the other? What's the other digital connectors? Tells got a good idea. Display port. Display port. Nice. And why yep, do the, we have so many? To connect different devices. I, I, that's a good start, but I need a better answer. Somebody help her out. Or like somebody who got multiple monitors. My guy, just nice. multiple monitors, all in one car. It's been working in healthcare. Like I said, I used to help radiologists. They would have like four monitors spread out. And we it's all been supported out of one car. It's four different cables going to four different monitors. And you can he can literally roll his mouse across all four monitors. They can have the same thing on them if, with the correct software. So, yes, that's it. I just want you, I mean, because we don't talk about it, that's, I just want y'all to see that. I didn't want to spend too much time on it, but DVI, good catch on that, Diaz. Display ports are down there. Maybe we see like a HDMI uh, mini possibly right there. I, I'll live with that, Jimmy, but I wanted them all to be four display ports too. But. Well, typically uh, in newer graphics cards, you'll probably have a combination of HDMI and DVI, the, or not DVI, uh, display port. Um, because those are the the better options when it comes to graphics. So that's why you'll typically see mostly DisplayPort, which like these first three are DisplayPort, and then an HDMI, just in case. This one has three DisplayPorts and one HDMI, and then a DPI. All right, so this is the most important slide for you and marvin has been kind enough to include it into the chat save that image because this will tell you what each of these workstations need at a very base level so if money is tight and you can only get the minimum of what you need to have these types of workstations. The check marks represent what you should focus on getting. So a graphics workstation, high video, high RAM, high storage. Audio, you want good video, storage, and audio. Virtualization, you want a good CPU, RAM. Those are the two big ones. Gaming, you want video, storage, and audio. Who can tell me why RAM is not prioritized? Because it delete because it's volatile. It, can it delete what the computer mm. is now? Not quite. Because it already focuses on storage. 
Mm, not quite. Who can tell me what's in a graphics card? You call that if um, <clears throat> there is another GPU. Mm -hmm. There is a graphical okay. pro processor. Yep. So the graphics card has its own processor in it. So because that graphics card has a processor that helps it run those uh, the high end video, mm -hmm. it's already making use of its own memory, essentially. So if you're on a budget, the graphics card storage and audio are more important. But in reality, in my opinion, I would do graphics card RAM storage and less on audio. But that's that's something you would also talk to your client about, like what they want in their system. So it, it just varies. Uh, thick client, it's just off the shelf. So you're not really building it. Uh, thin client basic applications, you're not prioritizing anything, then a network attached storage, which we haven't gotten to yet, I think it's in the next slide, you want lots of hard drives, high capacity hard drives. All right, uh, and let's see, Kelly, will you do me a solid and read this slide? Really? Yeah, I gotta step away <laughs> for just one second. <laughs> All right, optional supplemental content, network attached storage or NAS drives. Uh, basically, you know, this would be a Soho situation for a small home or office. Uh, you wanna make files available to everyone on a particular network. This is where you would insert possibly RAID arrays. Uh, the main things you would want to take into account with regards to this are more hard drives and gigabit NIC or network interface cards because you're going to want that fast communication so multiple people can interface with the storage device at any given time um, and not create any bottlenecks. You would typically use this in, again, a whole uh, Soho situation, small home or office. <clears throat> And you would use this for like media streaming or things like that, where instead of having the movies or what have you stored on each individual computer, you would have a centrally uh, located storage device to share video, music, pictures, what have you, or for file sharing. So everybody would have access to this. You can utilize this for as a single computer, you can use a computer as a home server, but this is a independent option that you can use it for a network attached storage or NAS. What is Questions? bottleneck, Kelly? What is bottleneck? Well, funny that you ask. Yeah, that's when so, you buy a bad cable. So, Ms. Diaz, have you ever seen the old two liter bottle? How it's fat and then it comes up to the neck? So if you imagine that's why the whole container of liquids won't just come out as quickly as it could. So bottleneck is finding places where you're not allowing data, in this case, to flow freely. Like it's to a point where we're waiting to get this information. You want to avoid bottlenecks. You want to avoid those those, Hi. those tight points Hi. that uh, that exist. And, and having a gigabit Ethernet NIC will allow that. Great. Traffic is another good way to uh, address that, too. So you want to keep it open, and you don't want to be the reason that your technology is the reason that's stopping it. So having that gigabit Ethernet, you won't, you won't have that issue. We all can access that information at the same time without it slowing down on us. Thanks. Kelly, were you done with the slide? I was. All right, so revisiting our objectives, you should be able to describe different custom configurations to meet common client needs. 
you should be able to describe the features and characteristics for different custom configured workstations. And given a scenario, select the appropriate components for a custom PC configuration to meet cu customer specifications or needs. So study that one slide we gave you and think about what each uh, workstation would look like and what they would do to kind of help you remember what you should be focusing on. And, uh, 